Okay guys, yes I know, more granny square projects. <laughs> so I saw this somewhere, I think on social media. It's possible one of you all sent me a picture and if you did, let me know. But I will be fair and say the original idea for this isn't mine, but I thought it was fabulous. I didn't read their directions. I didn't go to their page. If there's a video, I didn't see it. Um, I just saw the inspiration photo. Anyway, it was a granny square covered tote bag. And it looked like in the picture, it was created around a ready-made tote bag. And it instantly set my brain on fire. So we're gonna do that. Now I've already laid out kind of my squares. Um, they're all kind of different sizes, but um, I've laid them out in the way I think I want. This is gonna be one side, the other side's under it. I'm gonna spend some time sewing them together while crocheting them together. So, oh, I need one more, one more square. Two, 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 two. Yep, I need one more right here. All right, let me grab one more. Ah, oh, let's just grab one of these. Okay, there we go. Um, okay. So I'm going to spend some time sewing things together. Now I do have these two really big squares that I would like to use in the middle. It might be a little challenging and it might not work out exactly right, but we'll see. Um, in the meantime, I'm going to sort of set these all to the side. And sort of in rows. And we will start from the top down. This is the bag. Um, I don't remember where I got this from, but it's just your plain, inexpensive canvas shopping bag. Um, it doesn't have a flat bottom, but I think if you had a flat bottom on the bag, um, then you would want to assemble the front and back the way I'm going to do, and then maybe have a smaller rectangle or square or some single crochet like around the sides and down the bottom um, to accommodate the flatness of the bottom of the bag. Anyway, all right, so before we do anything else, we've got to assemble squares. So I have some acrylic yarn here. It is Karen One Pound in the color Soft Sage. We're going to use that. Start with a slip knot and let's see six millimeter crochet hook. Put my first two squares right sides together and do it just like we did for the Red Heart All-in-One Granny Square sweater in that I'm doing one half of the edge stitch loop and single crocheting through it. There we go. So start in the corner, pull the front loop of one stitch near you, the back loop of the stitch farther away from you, single crochet, and do that all the way down. And there's a little mistake here, but that's okay because we are gonna adjust for it as we go. I don't want to, I, I don't know when I made this granny square, at, but it was a long time ago, or a long-ish time ago, and we're going to just do that. In the grand scheme of things, it's not going to matter. Okay, let's see, let's do this one. Zoom in so you can see. Now you don't need to worry too much about stress on these squares because if as you use the bag and load it up with stuff, that's why you sew it to this lining, this plain muslin bag. Um, I have also done it where I make the bag and then I line it with some other fabric. But when I saw the picture of this, I thought, wow, that's so much easier. 
and you can do it if you have like a fabric sh old shopping bag that you aren't using anymore. Um, you could use that. Um, if you have those sun sort of plasticky fabric bags from like Michaels or Walmart. I think the Michaels ones are red and the Walmart ones are blue. You could do that. So anyway, I'm going to do that all the way down. And yeah, you can't even see where that mistake stitch was down there. And we're going to do that and we're going to go all the way down. Let's see. Let me do this. Okay, so we're going to go all the way down. It helps if I zoom out. All the way down this way and all the way down this way. And then we'll attach everything that way for both the front and the back. When I get that done, I'll be back. Okay, got one side done that took a few minutes. I do think it's gonna be a little bit big for the bag, but we're gonna just roll with it because this is just the lining, it's not gonna show. And I think that's gonna be fine. Yeah. All right, next. Okay, once you have your front and back of your bag, the squares stitched together, which we do, um, then we're gonna lay the front and back on top of each other. Um, I think kind of changing the orientation up a little bit. bigger than my bag but that's okay yeah and now we're gonna sew around these two sides and across the bottom so I'm gonna start here and go all the way around when I'm done with that I'm not gonna trim all these but I'm gonna sit and like tie them into knots so that nothing comes unraveled that sort of thing um, it shouldn't come unraveled, but just in case. Um, it's going to be on the inside of the bag. Nobody's going to ever see it, so I'm not super worried. Um, but if you wanted, before you do any more anything else, once you get the front and back sewn together, sit and weave in and trim all your ends. All right, let me get it done. I'll be back. Okay. <laughs> so I, I went down the one side, across the bottom, and up the other side. I'm not going to cut the yarn. I'm going to... Attach it to the bag with a stitch marker at the open, what will be top edge, just so things don't unravel. Okay, once we've done that, I said I was going to tie a bunch of these into knots, which we're going to do where we can anyways. Now these sunflower ones, I didn't make these, adopted daughter Jenny did, so on that particular one I'm going to cut that or can pretty much guarantee you it'll just poke out the front. Okay, we'll just keep sort of tying things together. I have a mushroom bag that I did. I will put a picture here and this is what I did on the mushroom bag. I don't remember weaving any ends in. I think I just did this. I could be wrong. I'm often wrong but I don't think so. Okay. So now just keep tying, keep tying. And then when you think you're done, ha, flip it over and do the other side. Okay, once you have everything secured and tied down or woven in, whatever you choose to do, turn it right side out. Now, if you choose not to line it the way I'm doing, that's cool. 
Um, you can make a lining. You can be. You can weave all these ends in and not line it at all. Um, I like my crochet to be decorative and not to put any strain on it. And I also like to overload my bags. So there's that. So I need a liner. So we're going to put this in. Kind of wondering. I have a different bag. Hold on. I have a different bag that I think might be a little bit better fit. but any bag will do. Okay, I would like to tack the crochet to the bag in a couple places just with some little small hand stitches. So let me get a needle and thread. Or actually even better, take it to my sewing machine and do a long basting stitch, um, but not all the way at the top, like down about a half an inch. I think that's a better idea. I'm gonna do that, I'll be back. Okay, you don't have to do that part and sew um, your crochet to the bag. That's a choice I'm making, um, but it, you don't have to do that. Um, I just want this to be pretty secure to the bag and I used a very wide basting stitch and as you can see, I, I do know how to sew straight lines, but I just, you know, nobody's gonna ever see that but me, so I'm not worried. Okay, back to our crochet yarn and hook. So I'm going to take this here and the first thing I'm going to do push the bag back and let's zoom in, there we go. Push the bag back bring the granny square forward I'm going to chain one and then I'm going to single crochet all the way around the top of all the granny squares through both loops. I'm gonna do at least one row all the way around. Maybe two, but at least one. As I say that, I'm thinking, you're probably gonna do two. Mm, we'll see. Let me do one row around and I'll be back. Okay, round one done. I do think I'm gonna leave it at one. Now we're gonna flip the handles towards the outside. We are gonna crochet up to the handle, then we will chain behind it, and then crochet, chain behind it, crochet. We'll do that all the way around. Crochet how many? I'm not sure yet. I'm guessing like five. So let's see. I slip stitched into the first single crochet. I'm gonna chain one and then single crochet in that same space.
how many you chain is going to depend on your bag and how big, how wide the handles are. Yeah, five, five should work. Oops. So now you've just created a little pocket for your handle. And then what we'll do after I finish this row is I'll go around and do one more row. So it's not just chains back here. So let me do that. I'll be back. Okay, last row around the top. I'm going to slip stitch, I should say last stitch around the top. I'm going to slip stitch into that first single crochet chain two, and then pull up a big loop and cut. I will pull back on those two chains, which will then knot that end. And then I'm going to take a needle, and we will weave this end down. until we get past the bag. And then pull the needle out and I'm gonna just stuff that in there. Let's see. So this bag does have a flat bottom so I could take these corners and sort of do this with them. I don't think at the moment I'm going to, but what do you all think? Down in the comments below, let me know. But I love the way of doing this handle. Now, personally, I would probably still sew the top edge of the crochet to the canvas bag, as I did here, just because I think it'll be more stable. And when you do have it loaded with stuff, these parts won't like sag down. Um, and you could stitch it by hand or machine, whatever you're more comfortable with. Um, you could also probably you know, back in the old days, my, my Nana would tell me I did this wrong. She, she would have told me to take some crochet thread or embroidery floss and blanket stitch around the top edge of the bag. And that first row of single crochet should have been attached to the blanket stitch. Like, but I'm lazy. But anyway, maybe on the next one. All right. So this was just to give you guys some ideas of what to do if you're like me and you're just making tons of granny squares and you don't know what to do with them. Here's one option. Make a bag, line it with canvas without having to make the canvas. This is handy. You can use an old shopping bag. You can buy a canvas bag as I did. There's a lot of options. Think about it. Anyway, questions, comments, or concerns, leave them down below. Check out the video description for any relevant links and ways to support the free content here on YouTube. The most important thing is to go out, do something nice for yourself because you deserve it, and I'll see you later. Bye, guys.